Lots going on with the Phoenix Mercury, our ace reporter at the Nets, Tia Reed, here to help us make sense of all of it. Locked on Women's Basketball starts now. You are Locked On Women's Basketball, your daily podcast on women's basketball. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Very happy Wednesday to you. I am Howard Magdal, host of Locked On Women's Basketball, and I want to thank you for making us your first listen every day. Over 200,000 of you showed up in May alone, the way we show up for you six days a week. And of course, it is not just me. It is the incredible team over at The Next. At thenextdukes.com, we have over 100 reported pieces every single month. Make sure you're subscribing. $9 a month, $72 a year. Thenextdukes.com, it all goes towards supporting our incredible staff and Someone who has been just a remarkable rookie here this year, a phenom, let's say, uh, has been Tia Reed, who has been covering the Phoenix Mercury for us. Tia is here talking about a very, very interesting team, off to a 6-6 and start. A lot more to it than that. And Tia, I guess where I want to start is you wrote a terrific piece about Brittany Griner's return. Take me through just sort of what the experience was finding out as relatively last minute that she's back, how the crowd responded, you know, what was that entire experience like? Yeah. So um, that day um, I had gone to their shoot around in the morning and um, Brittany was participating. And uh, afterwards um, Nate Tibbetts, or I think actually was maybe the practice the day before she was participating in Nate Tibbetts, their head coach had said, um, that basically it was really their first time that the team had been able to come together and practice because they'd been on the road and playing back-to-back games so much. Mm-hmm. Um, so he said that was really one of their first times that they were practicing all together. And at that point, she was ready to come in and start working with them. So at that point, that was the first time that she'd gone anywhere close to full speed. And then the next day, she was in shoot-around um, and pregame. Um, Nate was saying, you know, we'll see how she feels after warming up. And then they sent out starting rosters and she's on them. And so that was obviously when it was official that she was going to be playing um, in that game. And I mean, just the crowd was electric. I think, I don't think there was enough buildup and speculation beforehand because I don't think it was their biggest crowd of the year. The Mercury mm-hmm. had pretty good attendance, but I think it was about, uh, it's like a little over 9,000 people that came. So they've had 10,000 at a couple of their games already this year. But yeah, the crowd for who was there was was pretty excited, um, and she definitely helped and played a big role in that game because obviously it was playing against a Lynx team that they had already lost to on the road pretty badly. This is a Lynx team that's beaten a lot of teams uh, so far this year. Just beat Las Vegas on Tuesday night as well. Obviously, every point counted in what was an incredibly dramatic game. We're going to get deeper into. Kalia Copper and what she has done in segment two as well, as well as talking about the long range plans here. But, you know, to go back to BG right away, it it almost boggles the mind to me. And this is even bigger than just what we saw in her return, how with all that she has gone through and all that she has overcome in ways that there are no comps for it, right? You know, when, when she was coming back last year, you can't sit here and say, well, these other players who have been held away from their families overseas, uh, imprisoned for months, uh, how did they compare when they came back? You, you can't do it the way it would be, you know, coming back from an ACL or an Achilles tear. And the fact that she was as great as she was last year, and again, as great as she was this year, what do you attribute that to? Seeing her up close, seeing what she's able to do. I mean, you're absolutely right, Howard. Her journey has been one of a kind, uh, astounding story. Um, I mean, I think for sure part of it is this year, this team, um, you know, this team has talked so much about how close they are with all of each other um, and what kind of the vibe is like in the locker room. Even Nate has gotten into it. He's definitely has that players coaches vibe, heard some fun stories about 
um, what what they're talking about on the benches during uh, some games. So I think that's definitely part of it for for this year. I think her and herself, she has a very driven um, mindset and a unique motivation. Obviously, it's you know something that it takes to come back, but especially to come back from the type of situation that she was in. It takes something within a person. Um, to be able to kind of put that behind them and keep moving forward and have that motivation. Um, I think she's attributed it to her family as well. And just, just kind of all of the people around her who have supported her. Um, and I think even as well, her being able to now use the platform that she's on and the fact that, you know, she was a person with um, some sort of public status and not to turn it into advocating for others who may not be as big in the public eye. I think all of that has really helped her um, kind of grapple with it and um, be able to come back and play the way she did last year, uh, have the goals that she had set for herself this year. And despite, you know, dealing with the broken toe, being able to start her season the way she did. It also is on the court, just a really big deal. And you wrote, a terrific piece over at the next about this. You talked about it's not just Brittany Griner either. Rebecca Allen coming back from her concussion uh, is a big deal as well. And um, we talked a little bit about this during the off season about how Beck's length specifically was going to help them rim protect and hold in Minnesota, a team that has been extremely efficient in the paint to 18 points in the paint that night. It seems as if in a lot of ways it's, the missing link for what Phoenix needs to be a contending team. Did it look that way? At least I know it's a small sample. <laughs> We've only seen now two games with BG back this and the subsequent game on the road, but did it look like a different Phoenix team? I mean, I definitely think there is, there was a difference with, with her on the floor. Even she only played 20 minutes, uh, maybe 21. She had a minutes restriction, but even then right. the impact she had on the floor on both ends, really um, they kind of had, some faults um, out of the three-point line. Mm -hmm. uh, Kayla McBride was something to watch, eight for 13 in that game. It was yeah. pretty incredible. Um, so they had some some faults there, but the way that they were able to challenge people in the paint, one off where you could all, you didn't need to have Natasha Cloud drop. It was Brittany Griner that was able to come in and, and go one-on-one -on -one essentially with anyone who tried to come down into the lane was completely different for them. Um, Beck Allen, just able to get into those passing lanes and tip balls away and make it harder for the opposing team for the Lynx to get their passes where they need to go. So defensively, I think it's going to go a long way for them and being able to kind of step up their defense because their defense has been okay and it's been flashes. They're really good with their rotations. Um, we saw way back that zone against Las Vegas had Las Vegas very confused in those first couple of games, but um, teams have been able to figure them out a little bit better now. But I think having BG back in there, having Beck back in there is going to do a lot. Offensively, um, it kind of goes off a different article I wrote when I was talking about um, Phoenix and their threes and how yeah. if they're making their threes, you know, they could do some really great things. But they've also had some pretty abysmal three-point shooting performances. And I think it just brings another dimension to their offense, another option where they can kick the ball inside to BG and then kick it out to the three-point line in addition to the driving kicks, which is what primarily they were doing without sending it inside to Natasha Mack. So having different options is huge for them. It, it is. And, you know, we'll talk a little bit more about their ceiling, especially in segment three, because it's interesting to me. But I think it is really significant that in game two, first of all, BG, no minutes restrictions, or or if she did, not, none that was apparent, 38 think, minutes, 55 seconds, right? I, I, I think I think Nate, uh, Nate kind of ignored it. I think BG ignored it. They both, Nate was like, yeah, training staff's not too happy with me. BG was right. like, there's no way I wasn't playing. <laughs> but she, you see what she did in 38 minutes, 55 seconds, and that was 24 points. This is against Dallas on the road, nine rebounds. She didn't five assists, a couple of blocks. She only turned the ball over once, but to your point, and this is significant, nine of 33 from three, Phoenix still comes away with the victory on the road. So really interesting to me to see sort of that added dimension for what 
Phoenix can be. And of course, a big part of what they can be, the newcomers, especially Kalia Copper. Coming back in segment two, we're going to talk more about Ka and what she has done uh, ahead of and including, of course, uh, being named Olympian. So Tia Reed here, talking Phoenix Mercury, back with you just after this. But first, This episode of Locked On Women's Basketball is brought to you by BetterHelp. And look, there are always people in our lives that we can talk to, family, friends, when we're trying to work through things that are frustrating us, stressors, either big or small. When we keep them bottled up, it can start to affect us negatively. And while the people in our lives definitely want to help us, Therapy is a safe space to get things off your chest and figure out how to work through whatever is weighing you down with an impartial observer, somebody from the outside coming in, looking at it a little bit differently. So if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Here's how it works. You fill out a brief questionnaire, you get matched with a licensed therapist, if that isn't the right match for you, switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. So visit betterhelp.com slash locked on NBA today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H E L P.com slash locked on NBA. Locked on Women's Festival is also, also brought to you by Miracle Made Sheets. And so listen, it's hot out here. Now, Tia, I'm sure it's not as hot here in Jersey as it is in Phoenix, right? But we're we're getting into the 80s this week. I know that means nothing to you, right? That's an overnight low. We're getting to like 94 on Friday. So for my family here in New Jersey, how hot it gets at night, it has a direct impact on the sleep quality that we have. Miracle Made Sheets are here to help inspired by NASA and using silver infused fabrics that are temperature regulating, you can sleep at the perfect temperature all night long. These are these self cleaning sheets because of the silver infusion, they prevent up to 99.7% of bacterial growth. They have self cooling properties. It's comfortable. We love the way they feel. My wife and I are both so happy with how the bedroom looks as well, and most importantly, how it feels at the end of the night. You want to do what we're doing and go to trymiracle.com slash locked on to try Miracle Made Sheets today. Whether you're buying them for yourself as, uh, as an upgrade or just a gift for a loved one, if you order today, you can save over 40% and use our promo code locked on at checkout to get three free towels and save an extra 20%. Again, try miracle.com slash locked on the code L O C K E D O N to claim your free three piece towel set and save over 40% off. Try miracle.com slash locked on. Okay. Like what's the high today where you are? How hot is it getting? Probably 107, 108. Hmm. We haven't hit 110 yet, so. I mean, but I'm sure everyone, oh, there's no humidity, so that doesn't feel hot, right? That's it's, what they've always told me, but I don't know how much I believe that. Yeah, I know. I, I've been out there. I, I, I don't buy it either. I'm not, <laughs> not the 94 with humidity is any picnic either. But we're back talking to Tia Reed about the Phoenix Mercury. And Kalia Copper, it turns out, Pretty decent off-season addition, huh? It, it, it's the thing that I don't think people necessarily knew going in. I, I was willing to reserve judgment about it, even though I was very optimistic about this idea. As Kalia Copper at times was able to step up and be that legit number one difference maker scoring option. We saw her do it in the 2021 WNBA Finals for the sky. We didn't necessarily see her do it game in and game out. No fault to her. She wasn't asked to do it. Now she is being asked to do it. And when you look at the numbers she's putting up, I mean, we talked to her, just go back to that Minnesota game 
just a remarkable, remarkable game. And she hits the game winner. How big was that as setting the tone for who she is for this team before we even get into the numbers uh, and what she's doing to be able to not just score 34 points, but score that game winner. Take me through it. I mean, honestly, I think the tone had already been set. I mean, she had back-to-back games where she scored over 37 points at the beginning of the year. Like that was a crazy way for her to start her time with the Mercury. So, I mean, I think the tone had been said of, okay, she's the number one option. She's who they're trying to get the ball to. She's the offense is going to run out of her. Um, And so then she'd kind of come down and come down to kind of her average. And so, and it's always like a unexpected, not an unexpected, but it's like, she's going through and you're just watching the game and then you check the box score and it's wow, Kalia Copper, you know, she's at 20 points and then all of a sudden 25, 30, um, that, that game winner was, I mean, I, I just love basketball. So I was sitting there with goosebumps <laughs> down the final couple of minutes. So things were happening and I was like, what, what's going on? Why did they make that decision? And then all of a sudden the, the game winner, she hit it. I was like, that, that's incredible basketball. Um, and I think you're right. I think in terms of, you know, what the expectation was for her, I think a lot of people expected her to come and be a star. Um, but I don't know if they expected her to come and be this big of a star and put up these kinds of numbers out the gate. Um, and I think the game winner just kind of cemented that of that. She is the number one option. Um, there was, I mean, she was talked about it. Um, the play initially was drawn up for Diana Taurasi. Um, and Tarasi in the huddle was like, we should give it to Ka and have Ka take the shot. Um, and I think that right there tells you all you need to know about this next wave of Mercury basketball that's coming. For Diana to make that decision in that moment also feels like a very intentional thing. Uh, she has not always been a huge fan of sharing that particular <laughs> opportunity and moment is probably the easiest way uh, to describe it without getting into an entire other podcast about it. And, and, and so it does go back to, and, and, and we, again, for listeners at home, we should set the tone, right? Kalia Copper was an all-star in 2021, 2022, 2023, but you are looking at her elevating her usage rate from 28% last year, which was her highest, she was 24.8 in 2022, 21.9 in 2021. Her usage rate is north of 34%. So again, that clear franchise player in terms of lift. And so what is significant to me is her true shooting percentage so far, 564, actually higher than last year's 545, higher than her career mark of 543. It's better. She is not trading efficiency for usage or turnover rate right in line with her career line has always been low it's 13.5 percent you are not seeing her give up any of that and her assist percentage is actually a career high 14.1 percent so far so this is not a question of trading usage for selfishness either in all these different ways it's as if she has become prepared to do it it's quite a switch for somebody who, as recently as last fall, had signed a long-term extension in Chicago. The idea was she was going to be a member of the Sky for a long period of time. She's changed direction here. I guess it's fair to wonder and think about, in a lot of ways, and I've had some off-season reporting about it, Phoenix had opened up that salary slot for Elena Delano, not Kalia Copper. That was a last-minute switch. Would Phoenix be where they are with Elena Deladon at this point comparatively? I mean, I really don't think so. I think, I mean, I think you still get the veteran presence that you get with Ka, but I think it's the diversity of having Kalia Copper on the wing. Um, that's been a big thing that Nate has built into his offense. And I mean, it works on defense too. The versatility where you have – bigger guards you have players that can play more than one position or that can guard more than one position you know Kalia Copper she's I think she's listed as a guard but Mm -hmm. you can guard forward she's a wing she's a three she can guard pretty much up and down your roster Natasha Cloud is reminded us on more than one occasion that she's guarding one through five this year Uh, you bring back Allen back back Allen was helping guard Nafisa 
Nafisa Collier, it didn't fall on Brittany Griner, who's coming back from a broken toe. So I think, I think it all works together for Copper um, in that sense where I don't know that Elena Deladon would have had that fit. And I certainly don't think that Elena Deladon would be putting up the points right now that, that Copper is and wouldn't fit in with the three-point shooting, the high three-point shooting volume that the Mercury have put up because Copper also is a big part of that. I mean, she's shooting almost 40% from three. Um, I think that's that's a big part of it as well. Yeah, to me, and, and I totally agree with you, Elena Deldon, an elite, elite player, a Hall of Fame player. 100%. The question at this point in her career, was she ready for the types of minutes, the types of defensive load, the types of essentially two-way kind of contributions we are seeing from Kalia Copper? I don't know, and it's just fascinating the way sports turns uh, on these types of decisions, but just really interesting for also what it means for the Phoenix Mercury going forward. So we're going to talk about ceiling both this year and beyond in segment three. Back with Tia Reed of the Nets in just a moment. I'm Howard Megdahl. You're listening to Locked On Women's Basketball. Locked On Women's Basketball is brought to you by FanDuel. And Tia, I... This is probably not a thing that's well known in Phoenix. I know this is something we haven't seen uh, here in Jersey, but apparently there's an NBA finals going on right now. The NBA season does not end at the end of the regular season or early in the playoffs. Is that something that you had heard? I thought the NBA season ended when the WNBA season started. I thought Mm -hmm. it was just like, yeah, leave men's basketball. Women's basketball is getting going. It's interesting, and you'd think so, because obviously the WNBA, you know, the stuff that matters. But no, the the men's league, it has continued. As uh, I'm getting word that it continues, in fact, to this day. And so you actually have, you know, using FanDuel.com, an opportunity to bet not just on the WNBA, but also the NBA Finals. That's what they call them. They're named after, uh, presumably, the WNBA Finals, but it's for men to play basketball as well, which more power to them. I guess they have every right to do it. And right now, new customers at FanDuel, you get $200 in bonus bets with any $5 bet. That's 200 bucks you can use to bet on everything from, oh, look at that. They have an NBA Finals MVP too. Ah, good for them. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on, and you can add a big win to your summer bucket list. That's FanDuel.com slash L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Yeah, back here in Philadelphia, there's been a lot of conversation about that team. Philadelphia doesn't yet have a WNBA team, so obviously, you know, for now, they're settling for the Sixers. But Of course, yeah. Hopefully, Kathy Engelbert in the league makes a decision that fixes that pretty soon. <laughs> so we're back here with Tia Reed talking about the Phoenix Mercury, the number one basketball team in the city of Phoenix. And we want to talk about their medium-term and long-term plans. I talked to Diana Tarazi when she came through New York a couple of weeks ago. And I said this, I'm paraphrasing, but you didn't win title one until year four for you in Phoenix. The idea that you can build a team that is a contender, that can go win a championship, is hard to swallow when you look at everything from how it took the Las Vegas Aces three years just to reach the finals once they drafted Asia Wilson, to Washington Mystics brought in Elena Deladon and Christy Tolliver in 2017, but they didn't win a title until 2019, didn't reach the finals until 2018. Even look at the New York Liberty last year, who, to my mind, are ahead of schedule, winning uh, and advancing to the finals in year one, but ultimately falling to the Aces. And so I said to her, is it possible to do that? Can you build a championship team in one year? And she said, you know, this is going to be very difficult. We don't know how easily we can do it, but we're really confident about the team that we've put together. We're 12 games in. That is both not a lot of time, and yet it's already well over a quarter of the season through. Does this team look to you like a team that can challenge? I'm not asking you to predict, (laughs) but can it challenge the New York Liberty, the Aces, 
Men's have been great early. The Connecticut Sun, by most metrics, have been the class of this league. Can they be in the, and, and the Seattle Storm, of course, are on the rise, too. But they have the same question Phoenix does. Do you, do you put them in that category? I think – I don't think at the moment, no. But I also don't think that we've seen Phoenix at the best it's can, it can be. Mm-hmm. And I think that's with BG and Beck Allen on the floor. Um Obviously, we've gotten glimpses of that, but I think they're still coming together and kind of hitting their stride. Um, it almost works, I guess, even maybe a little bit to their favor because you. I feel like now you, you definitely know they won't peak at you know too early in the season because BG missed the first 10 games of the year. Right. Um, so I think there's um, – I mean, Nate said it um, – great the other day he said i think our best basketball is still ahead of us and i think that's true for them i think their best basketball is we'll see it come in the coming days and um obviously finishing up the commissioner's cup they're going to play the aces and they're going to play the storm again which are is going to be huge metrics for them because the aces um are not the team that they were to start the year seattle is hitting their stride they're on a winning streak and seattle has given uh, Phoenix some issues. So they'll get Seattle at home, I, I believe. And that, you know, Phoenix, the way they play at home is very different than how they played on the road. Yeah. Um, so I think, I think they could get to that conversation. I mean, I said it was saying it preseason. I was like on paper, the roster that they have is a team that I think could win a championship in this league this year. Um, it would be a battle, but I think they could have that potential as their ceiling on paper they just got to put it together and we'll see how this works out with BG and Beck back to me. And I, I wonder if they, if they view it the same way, if you view it the same way, it's almost like a two year project, right? In terms of this league, nobody except for Kalani Brown is signed. I mean, literally nobody other than Kalani Brown is signed past 2025. Cause everyone's ready for the players are expected to opt out after the 2024 season. That would trigger the end of the CBA not after 2027, but after 2025, nobody's signed on for the long term. So it's like, all right, you got two years. You look at the contracts that were signed. Natasha Cloud signed through 2025. Kalia Copper signed through 2025. They've kind of reset the clock. Diana Tarazi turned 42 literally yesterday. Uh, BG is 34. So you say, geez, counting on those two as your one and two is a big challenge now in a lot of ways you know you can rank them at a three and a four you say is one a one b but you have natasha and kalia you know natasha 32 kalia 30 you know in their prime ages as well does it feel as if this team can build for 2025 or do you just you still think this team has a title it's sight set on a title for 2024 too I mean, I think every team says it. I don't know how much they believe it, but every team says that the goal is a championship. I think Phoenix is one of the teams in this league where that is not – it's not a far-fetched possibility for them, and I think it is a reasonable goal for them to set, like I said, with this roster that they have. I really do think that they could win a championship. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know how many years Diana Taurasi has left. Um, I don't know, like her – I was talking about this with someone else the other day. I think her knees are superhuman and the fact that she's able to just keep going. Um, I think one of the biggest things for me and seeing how, if it's a 2024, if it's still uh, alive in 2025 or yeah, alive for next season would be um, the draft. Obviously they didn't, they didn't get a pick until the third round this year. Mm-hmm. Um the two young players that they did draft both were waived um, and you've got to get someone in that's going to fill that spot behind Tarasi. Um, So that's one, that's one thing they did sacrifice in in trading for copper was you lost that first round draft pick. Um, And while it has worked out in great success for them, now they're also not likely to have a chance for a, one of the, uh, the star guards, the page backers of the world coming out of next year's draft class. So it's kind of who do you think you can pick up that's going to fill the massive hole that was Tarasi for this organization and kind of be that, that true next wave of, of young, super young talent, because you've got Natasha Mack already down there, depending on how long they decide to stick with her. But um, I, I think that's really the big metric for, 2025 but i think either way 
a championship is um, well within the possibility of what could happen for this team. Um, it just depends on how everything shakes out, how they continue to develop and deal with some of their issues on the floor. I mean, the big thing has been turnovers as yeah. of late. Um, so if they can figure out those turnovers, continue to work the ball inside, get it back out, hit threes at a high rate, um, with with the way some different teams are are emerging as top teams, I think Phoenix could definitely be a part of that that it's, new tier. It's fascinating. I agree. And again, the flip side of it is, if things had gone really south, there is a pick swap that the New York Liberty could engineer with them. So uh, there's that too that wasn't out of the clear copper deal but the the idea that they could potentially give up a high pick that looks less and less probable ever since especially Brittany Grinder's return but uh you're right it's going to be a fascinating season ahead of course listeners make sure you are reading everything Tia Reed is writing <laughs> about this Mercury team uh it's been delightful to be working with you so excited uh, for our time ahead. And uh, to our listeners, thank you, of course, for listening to us. Uh, I am uh, pleased to tell you there'll be a massive upgrade in the host chair tomorrow to Gigi Spear. We'll be leading the way for you for our Thursday show. But thank you for making us your first listen every day. I'm Howard Mandel wishing all of you a wonderful Wednesday. You are Locked On Women's Basketball, your daily podcast on women's basketball. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.